the 1960s, politics across the Pacific was dominated by a contest between colonial control and self-determination. Delegates attending the 1965 South Pacific Conference at Leh in Papua New Guinea saw a chance to strengthen regional identity and push for greater Pacific representation. Sixty delegates came from an area covering 13 million square miles. They represented three million people. Because of this, the range of the conference was wide. The social, economic, educational and health problems of the islands throughout the South Pacific. A new breed of leaders from across the region wanted Pacific Islanders to have a seat at the decision-making table. The conference is an opportunity to meet men from other Pacific Islands. They exchange ideas and compare notes on each other's problems and progress. Influenced by a newly independent Western Samoa, a wave of Pacific nations actively began agitating for independence, including the people of PNG. The Lay Rebellion, as it came to be called, was a turning point. Pacific nations effectively challenged colonial notions of modernization and Western-style democracy. 100 recommendations for the island's social and economic development had been improved. The Lay meeting will have a lasting significance for the Pacific peoples who have come together to work in harmony. Then the talking was over. From the humid coastland, delegates were airlifted to the eastern highlands. They saw and talked with the people, noted community development, watched the deadly skill of native archers. As a result of the Lay meeting, projects recommended will bring expert technical services to these people and the three million other islanders from the 16 territories. Similar scenes greeted Gough Whitlam eight years later, making his first visit as Australian Prime Minister. These native people from the eastern highlands of Papua New Guinea, and there are about 5,000 of them here, have come to give the Prime Minister, Mr Whitlam, and the Chief Minister, Mr Samari, a traditional sing-sing, a welcome to Garoka. Having campaigned to end Australia's colonial ties, he was determined to grant PNG its independence. But there were concerns a process was moving too fast. But this Sing Sing is not without its political significance. These people did not want to hold a Sing Sing if it meant support for independence. They're very concerned about independence. They don't want independence yet. In fact, they presented the Prime Minister with a petition and it sets out the following terms. We oppose your government setting a date for independence. We are vigorously opposed to our present government setting dates for independence because it is their decision, not ours, and we have no confidence in their ability to handle independence. This has been made quite clear to Mr Whitlam. Most of the people have told him that they're ready for self-government, but not for independence. These concerns were shared by newly elected Chief Minister Michael Sumare. We should not set a date for independence until we have achieved self-government and have had time to adjust to self-government. We realize the external pressures on Australia to set an early date for independence, and we realize the internal pressures for Australia to end its colonial role. And I'm sure, Mr. Prime Minister, your government does not want Australia to be a colonial power. Your government wants to see Papua New Guinea as a partner, and I think this is the feeling and this is the philosophy of a Labour government that this country will be treated as a partner, not as a dependent country and not as a, another little colony uh, which is, was a practice for generations. I cannot stress too often that the decision for independence is not only a decision about Papua New Guinea, it is about Australia and Australia's view of her own proper role in the world. Australia is no longer willing to be the ruler of a colony, and my government is determined to divest itself of that role in the lifetime of the present Australian Parliament. By the end of 1973, PNG was a self-governing territory. In September 1975, Papua New Guinea gained full independence, Sir Michael Sumare becoming the nation's first Prime Minister.